Have you ever looked at a twisting glass facade and thought how on earth do they actually build that? Or maybe you've struggled to create even a basic curtain wall that behaves the way you want. Well, you are in the right place. In this video, we are breaking down curtain walls like never before. From the simple to the stunning, straight grids, angled panels, even flowing organic shapes. We are covering it all step by step. No fluff, just clear methods you can apply right away whether you are designing a high rise or experimenting with parametric forms. So by the end, you won't just know how curtain walls work, you'll know how to make them exactly the way you want. Let's dive in. So jumping into our search engine, and in this case we're using Google, if you search on curtain walls, you'll come to understand that curtain walls are non-structural exterior wall coverings, which usually protect exterior elements from getting into the house or into the structure, such as wind, dust, so on and so forth. And if you are to click on images, you'll quickly come to find out that you have seen these curtain walls on various types of designs, such as homes where we have these big windows, as people call them, but they are just simply curtain walls. So with Revit, you can also create your own masterpieces and today I'll show you how. So into Revit, and in this case, you're using the Autodesk Revit 2025. All that you ought to do is to start a new project and we're going to start under the architectural template, then hit on OK. All right. So inside Revit, as you're already aware, there are three main types of wall families. So what are they and how do you get to them? All that you ought to do is to navigate to the architecture tab. And under this, you'll find the building panel and you'll find the wall command. You can opt to activate this command by clicking on this command here or by hitting on WA on your keyboard to pop up this command. You can also look down in the description where we have attached a completely free Revit ebook that has more than 100 commands that you can start learning today. So under the properties tab, all that you have to do is click on this drop down option. And if I was to scroll all the way up, you'll find that our main family here is basic wall. If I scroll all the way down, we'll have these two other families. So in this video, we'll be focusing on the cutting wall family. So what are they and how do they work? So we have three main types, the first one being empty. So I'll just simply select it and then I'll just click on my first point, my second point, just randomly, then go back to the drop down menu, then select on the next option. So I'm just simply drawing this randomly so that I can show you the main difference of these three. After that's done, I'll just simply hit on this 3D view so that we can have our 3D view. And then I'll just simply hide this by selecting them and then EH to hide element in view. After that's done, I'll just hit on WT on my keyboard so that I can have my 2D and my 3D in view so that we can see the main difference. So the first one is the empty one, which is simply a plain panel of glass. And you can simply see how it looks like. It just simply looks like a wall, but it's completely glass. And then the second option is usually this exterior glazing, which is basically like this empty one, but has these grid lines. And the third one is the storefront, which usually has now the mullions. So the mullions are basically brackets that are usually used to hold these panels in place so that they do not fall off. So in the event that you are to zoom in into a specific member, for this case, let's zoom in into this exterior glazing, you'll clearly see that we have this specific glass panel that is connected to this one, but there's no mullion. So if you're just to hit on tab select a couple of times, you'll be able to select this specific tab or this specific panel, and you can clearly see it within the properties option here, and you can be able to edit it in the event that you wanted to edit it after unpinning it. So having understood that, let's look at more advanced options. So I'll just simply select this dash select, then I'll just hit on delete key on my keyboard so that I will delete them from the project. So we'll be left with this top front. So the top front is basically a curtain wall with the mullions, but sometimes when you draw them in Revit, they do not have any mullions. So you all have to define your mullions. So how do you do that? All that you have to do, you can click on edit type here so as to customize them and this pop-up window is gonna be shown. So from here, we have certain parameters that you can be able to tweak. So the first one is under construction. So you can specify the function. Is it exterior? Is it interior? So on and so forth. For this case, you're gonna leave it as exterior. You can also specify if you want it to be automatically embedded, especially when you're working with 
masses or voids, but for this case, we're gonna just leave it as is. And then you can also specify the cutting wall properties or material. So if you click on this drop down, you can specify from this list what you wanna use within these panels. So if you wanna work with the solid, all that you have to do is just say specify solid, hit on apply, and it's gonna be applied to your cutting wall. You can also specify the joint condition. So what is this joint condition? This is very simple. In the event that you have your mullions running across either vertically from bottom moving up or running across, let's say from left running to right, you can specify the joint condition. If you want your vertical mullions to run continuously or your horizontal ones to run continuously, all that you have to do, just simply click on this drop down and specify the command that you want. So for this case, we can go with the vertical grid continuous. So I'll just simply select on that. And then we're gonna look at other options. So we also have the materials and finishes. So for this case, you cannot specify this one unless you specify the specific type of material. Remember, this is a system. So it has various types of materials running within it. So that's why it's currently not an option. Under the vertical grids, you can specify how they're gonna be spaced. With it, using the maximum spacing layout or minimum spacing, fixed number, so on and so forth. So let's work with the maximum spacing and let's work with something like 1500 millimeters. You can also adjust for mullion sizes. In the event that you have mullions of different sizes, all that you have to do is just simply check on this box and it's gonna be catered for in the calculation. So for our case, I can just opt to leave it off. And also you can specify the same thing for your horizontal grids. So we can work with, let's say, maximum spacing as well. If you want it to be a perfect cube or a perfect grid, you can just simply go with this option so that it looks symmetrical. You can also now specify which type of mullions are being used for the vertical as well as the horizontal. So to do this is quite simple. All that you have to do is just simply read the parameter here and specify the value. So for interior type, we can go, let's say with something like 25 mm radius circular mullion. Then for a boundary type one, we can go, let's say with uh, circular mullion 50 mm. So I can go with the same for this. Let's do the same for horizontal. So I'll just do the same for this. All that I'm doing just simply selecting from the pre-existing list that we have there. After that's done, you can give more relevant information down here if you want, but if you're satisfied, you just simply hit on apply and just like that, you'll see the change has been applied in real time. So if you're not satisfied with that, you can always tweak. So let's say we wanna go with a V, a corner mullion. So I'll select that, hit on apply, and then we're gonna have this warning in the event that it's going to change the joining type. All that you have to do is click on okay, and just like that, you have seen that it has changed. So we can go with also border one, the same type of design. So you have just to scroll down or specify the one that you want, hit on okay on the warning, and just like that, if you hit on okay, it's gonna be updated here as well. So if you are to zoom in, you can clearly see that there is a big significant difference compared to the way it was initially. So after that's done, say you wanted to change, let's say how it looks, how do you do with this? It's quite simple. All that you have to do is simply select it. You can select either in your 3D or your 2D. You select the whole thing, hit on edit type, and then you can change the distance as well. So let's say we go with something like 2,500 for the horizontal so that you have something of the sort, then hit on okay, you can do that. And not only that, you can also edit the grids. How do they look like? So I can just simply zoom in. Let's say in the event that we wanna bring in something here, let's say a door, how do you change this? So all that you have to do is to tab select to ensure that you select the grid, which is gonna be denoted by this dash line. So if you select on that, you'll find this contextual ribbon, which says cutting wall grid. And from here, you can specify either to add or remove segments. So for our case, we want to remove. So I'll select on this option and then I'll select the area that I want to remove. It is that area, let's say that area along this dash line. So you ought to select within this dash line. And once you're satisfied, you just right click, hit on cancel and that command will be removed. So let's do the same for this other grid line as well. So tab select to make sure that you have this dash line, navigate to the same command, select the specific mullions that you don't want to be seen within this area, then right click, hit on cancel, and do the same for this one here. So I'll just simply tab select here, select a new, hit on that command again, and then I'll just simply remove that and then hit on cancel. So that's simply how we do it. So we can have 
let's say something like a frame of a door here. And in the event that you zoom in and you want to do more editing, let's say for your mullions over here, if you want them to be joined, all that you have to do is to select the mullion. So you'll select on this and you'll see this option here of toggle mullion join. So if I click on this option once, you'll simply see that it has changed the pre-existing command of joining, which was vertical overwriting the horizontal. And we now have the horizontal joining automatically. So you can also do the same on this other side, something of the sort, especially for your door frame. So you just simply select on this and it works both for the horizontal and vertical. So you can specify on the one that you want to edit. So that's not all. So how do we bring in our doors? So to activate the door command, you can simply hit on DR on your keyboard. And then from these options, you can select the ones that you have. Let's say this one. If you try to place it within your curtain wall, you clearly come to realize that you cannot place them. So how are you gonna simply place them? It's quite simple. All that you have to do is navigate to Insert tab, hit on Load Family because you wanna bring in a new family and you might think that you'll find it under doors. But for my case, I'm just under libraries and then I'll navigate to cutting wall panels. So I just simply double click on this option. And after that's done, if you navigate down here, you'll find the various types of doors that you can use for your design. Let's say we go with this one with push bar, I'll click on open. And then after that's done, how are we gonna place it? If you navigate to architecture or hit on DR for door, if you navigate to this drop down option, the door is not there. So how are we gonna do it? It's quite simple. All that you have to do is navigate back to your model, tab select until you have this panel selected. So sometimes it takes a few selections until you get it right. So like that, after it's selected, you'll just simply navigate to this drop down, and you'll find this option added here. So you'll just simply select on it. And just like that, our door has been added here. And the same thing applies to windows. In the event that you want to select either some area to be your window, all that you have to do is the same thing, just simply navigate to insert tab. And under the insert tab, click on load family, specify the type of window that you want, let's say like this one, like Windows cut and wall, click on open. After that's done, do the same process. So tab select a couple of times until you have this option. You can also right click, then you can simply navigate to select panels either in the, in the vertical grid or horizontal grid. So if you wanna select all these panels at once, you can simply select them like that. Navigate to this drop down option, then select the window option that we have added here. And just like that, they are now all transformed to windows. So that's simply how we do it. And you can clearly see that also in our 2D, our door has been updated and you can just simply orbit to see the main differences. All right, so how do we now bring our basic walls inside cutting walls? Still the same thing. All that you have to do, just let's say we wanna bring a basic wall down here, just simply tab select. So hover your cursor around this area here, right click, navigate to select panels, and we're gonna go with horizontal grid. Then all that we have to do is just uh, hold down shift to deselect this main panel here or this door here so that we are left with just these ones here, navigate to this drop down option, and then you can specify the one that you want. You wanna go with stacked walls or you wanna go with the basic walls. So it's up to you. Let's go with something thin. So I'll go, let's say something like, so let's go with something like this retaining wall. After you've selected it, that's it. It's just a matter of doing that. And just like that, now we have our cutting wall looking like that. So we have gone through all that you have to understand about the walls. Let's look at more advanced options that you still have under cutting walls. So in this specific project, I already have masses. So I'll just simply navigate to mass and we have already gone through on how you can come up with your masses within Revit. So in this case, we have this uh, spherical thing, let's say like the apple perk that we have here, and then we have this complex roof. So how are we gonna bring in our cutting walls within this specific shape? It's still quite simple. All that you have to do is navigate back to the architecture tab and under the built-in panel, you'll find this cutting system command. Just simply select on this option once and then you're gonna be prompted to select the faces to which that you want to add your cutting grid system. So I'll just simply select on this side and also uh, select on this other side. So you have to be careful the side that you're selecting. If you select on the inner face, it's gonna give you a different setting. So I'll select on the exterior face alone. After that's done, I'll just simply hit on create system. And just like that, if I was just to zoom in, you can clearly see how complex our system is. I'll just simply hit on escape a couple of times so that you can just simply see how it looks like. 
If you wanna edit, it's still the same thing. So I can opt to hide now my mask. I'll just simply navigate to masking and side then click on that option so that we'll be left with this grid system. Then I'll select this grid system, I'll navigate to edit type and I can play around with these settings as well. So for this option, let's say of fixed number, I can go with let's say maximum spacing of something like let's say 500. I can go with this uh, grid two option. I can go with let's say maximum spacing of let's say something like a thousand, something of the sort. And then I can specify mammalians. So I can go with interior type, let's go with 25 mm. Well, the exterior we go, let's say with 50 mm. So we're gonna use the same for this other side as well. So interior and also this one exterior as well. And then after that's done, I'll just simply hit on apply. And just like that, we can clearly see how spherical it looks like. If you want it to be more smooth, obviously you need just to increase the spacing. So let's say we go with 500 as well, then hit and apply, and then just like that, it's gonna be more spherical, something like that. So this is simply how we do it, and this is how beautiful it looks. If you wanna do the same for this other one over here, which is our roof, all that you have to do is navigate to massing inside, turn on the massing, select architecture, select the grid system, then you're gonna be prompted to select the item that you want. So for our case, it's this one. Then all that you have to do is click on system, create the system. And just like that, the system has been created with the same command that we have used over here. And that's how beautiful it looks like. So you can improve your designs and make them more complex by using these systems that you have here. So you can always proceed with more advanced uh, uh, design. So let's say we finish this. So I'll just see, simply hit on CS, create similar on my keyboard so that I just simply create a very simple wall, let's say from that point. Then I'll just simply delete this overlapping uh, members that we have on the corners. That's why we have that warning. Also with this one, I'll just simply delete so that we do not have duplication as well as this one here. So after that's done, it's just a matter of now creating our roof for our structure. And to do this is quite simple. You just simply click on roof, specify the level that you want. So let's say level two, hit on yes. Then I'll just simply change the properties and now we're gonna go with this roof slope glazing. So I'll go with that option. Then I can either go with peak walls and then I can give an overhang of let's say two feet, which is 600 millimeters. Then I'll just simply select the direction that I want, just something like that. Then I can also extend to the core wall, then key, click on finish, attach to the roof as well. And just like that, we'll have that. And obviously there are some members that need to be deleted. We'll hit on delete and then we'll be left with something like this. So this is simply how we do it. And you can obviously select this, edit your type, give more information if you want. Let's say if you want to specify your specific members, you can try to marry with the ones that you have at the bottom to make everything be symmetrical. So we can go with this and you can always play around with your justification where to start. Is it the end or is it the beginning? And just to make everything look good. So let's just specify this first. So you can obviously copy this, control C, then you can control V here. So just to find it way faster, then you can hit on okay just to have it applied like that. And if you see anything, let's say that justification is not okay, you can always go to these options here under the properties and edit the grid lines. Let's say you can change the justification from beginning. Let's say you go to the end, then hit on apply and the day and the distancing is gonna be changed. If you go to center, so you're just simply changing on where specifically these mullions are starting. Are they starting from the beginning or from the center, so on and so forth. And you can always change your specific slope that you want over here. But for my case, I'm content with that. And this is just simply how beautiful our structure is coming up really, really well. All right, so to have a clear representation or visualization on how beautiful our project looks like, we can use Lumion. So I'll just go to Lumion. So under this specific tab, all that we have to do is just simply start the sync so that we see how it looks like once it's brought into Lumion. So it just take a few seconds just to be sent from Revit to Lumion. And just like that, it has been brought in. So this is simply how our model looks like. Obviously some things are floating everywhere, but it looks really, really good. So obviously you can play around with uh, the material that you have used for this specific item, just to make it look really beautiful, but it looks quite good. It looks quite futuristic. So that was all about making and modifying curtain walls in Revit. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to learn the real deal, then sign up for the free Revit Architecture Essentials course.
Link is in the description of this video. And let me know in the comments down below what you want to see in the next one. I'll see you in the next video.